Okay, so let's look at this um, given theorem, and we're missing the conclusion. And let's see if we can guess it. We're saying if the series converges, so of course the series here is the infinite sum of the terms of the sequence a n, so a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5 and so forth, so the infinite sum of all these real numbers, we assume that this series converges. And just to simplify the intuition here, we'll assume that the terms are positive. The terms could sometimes be negative, the result is still true, we'll give an actual proof of it. But just for the intuition, imagine that you are trying to sum this infinite list of positive real numbers. So you do a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 and so forth, and the result will return a real number as we assume the series converges. Then, what must be the limit of a n, the terms you're summing as n approaches infinity? Let's see if we can guess what the answer should be. So we are adding infinitely many real numbers, and the result returns a real number. So we do a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus a4 plus a5, and we never stop. And as we add this infinite list of real numbers, we obtain in the end a real number. Well, if you think about this, the only way this can be possible if the terms you are summing are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. You cannot add an infinite number of large terms and the result giving a real number. So the terms you are adding must be getting smaller and smaller and smaller well, how small should be small enough? Well, the answer is they have to be shrinking to zero. So as n approaches infinity, the terms of our sequence must be shrinking to zero. So that's the intuition. So to summarize, the intuition is you can't possibly expect to add an infinite list of real numbers and obtain a real number unless the terms you're summing are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and the limit are shrinking to zero. So that's the intuition. Now let's prove this result and the proof is actually very straightforward. So we have this infinite series and we assume it converges, therefore the result of this infinite sum is nothing but a real number. Let's call it L. So this infinite sum is some real number. Let's now look at this infinite sum, this series, as the limit of two partial sums. This may look strange at first, but you'll see why in a second. So, the series is equal to the limit. So let's first now look at the first partial sum. We'll sum from 1 to uppercase n. And then we'll of course have to let uppercase n tend to positive infinity. This I will call Sn. And we can expand out the first few terms. Sn is a1 plus a2 plus a3 plus all the way up to a n minus 1 plus the last term a uppercase n. And of course this clearly is equal to our infinite series which in turn is equal to L whatever value it converges to. Let's now look at a second partial sum. So we go back to the infinite series and now let's sum from 1 and we'll stop one step 4 up to n minus 1. And of course as we let uppercase n tend to infinity, n minus 1 goes to infinity so in the limit both are equal. And this, of course, we will call S 
n minus 1. And we can write the first few terms. So a1 plus a2 plus a3 all the way up to a sub n minus 1. The key point is, as this limit of this partial sum equals the same infinite series, the result is also equal to the real number L. So the limit of Sn is L, the limit of Sn minus 1 is L. And now, Sn and Sn minus 1 are almost the same. This is exactly Sn minus 1. So now the idea is to consider the limit as n approaches infinity of Sn minus Sn minus 1. Let's see what happens. Well, we'll look at this in two ways. In the first case, as both converge, right, Sn converges to L, so this will converge to L minus Sn minus 1, and the limit also converges to L minus L, so the limit is 0. But, what is Sn minus Sn minus 1? Well, we do this minus this, so all of these terms cancel, and we are left with simply a n, which proves that as we let n tend to infinity, a n, the nth term of the sequence, approaches 0. And we're done. Of course, we're using here uppercase n. Well, we can easily replace uppercase n by lowercase n, as now here uppercase n is nothing but a dummy variable. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth term of the sequence is equal to 0, which was the desired conclusion. So again, don't worry so much about the proof, but keep in mind the intuition. If you are going to add an infinite list of real numbers, and the result is a real number, there is only one way of this possibly happening. The terms you are summing, the ANs, have to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller, so they have to be shrinking to zero in the limit. And now out of this result, there is a very nice converse to it, and this is known as the divergence theorem. We'll state the result, and we'll see that it follows directly from this theorem. So even though we prove this first, we'll use more often the divergence theorem. It is also sometimes called the divergence test, and in either case we can write this as d so from now on, if you ever want to quote the divergence theorem or the divergence test, you can just say by dt. So here's the result. If the limit of the sequence a n as n goes to infinity is not equal to 0, then the series of the terms of this sequence diverges. So again, let's look at this very intuitively, and then we'll see that, rigorously, it is nothing but a simple consequence of the previous theorem. If the limit of our sequence is not equal to zero, the terms are not shrinking to zero, so they're not getting small enough. They're always a little too big. They're not shrinking to zero. And so if you try to add an infinite set of real numbers that are not getting small enough, the sum can possibly converge, therefore it does not exist and it diverges. But let's now look at this from a simple consequence of this result. 
let's assume here that the result is wrong. We have only one assumption. The assumption is that the limit of a n is not equal to zero. When you look at a given series, there are only two possibilities. The series either converges or diverges. Well, suppose the series converges. If the series converges, we know that automatically the sequence must converge to zero. But this cannot be, as our assumption here is that the sequence does not converge to zero. So clearly, our series cannot possibly converge, so the only other option is for the series to diverge. And that's it.